Hello there and welcome to this video today where we are going to be looking at using technology. So in this video we are going to be looking at, at encryption, uh, protocols that we could be using and a general overview of how we can use technology, how people should use technology. So the first question I can think you are asking yourself is what is meant by encryption? Um, encryption is used to basically it's used to secure data. Um, so if you're going to send confidential information or anything private or anything that needs to be secured, you'd want to use encryption. So if anyone intercepted it or found it and they tried to read and understand it, they wouldn't know what it is that they are looking at. So here we've got two different ways of performing encryption. On the left hand side, we've got something called a Caesar cipher. Um, and on the right hand side, we've got the pig pen cipher. I'm going to give you a brief explanation of both of them now. So over here, on the left hand side we can see here we've got the letter E circled in blue um, and then down here we've got the letter B so what this means with this particular Caesar cipher if we want to be using the letter E instead of writing E we're gonna write B simple as that um, and then if we are going to be writing uh, the letter B we're gonna go down here to Y so we're gonna write B Y Y and if anyone doesn't know we're using a Caesar cipher, what that essentially means is they think we've written the word EBB, e -B -B. but they don't they don't they don't know that because we're looking at it and they're they're seeing B Y Y and they don't understand what B Y Y means. But if you know how the Caesar cipher has been used, you'll be able to decode that and get the word EB. Similarly, if someone was going to write A X A, if someone is looking at that, they might think why they're talking about car insurance. But in fact, we've written the word dad. If we're looking at the D here, goes down to A, the A goes down to X, and then the D goes back down to A again, which is how we've got AXA. If we're looking at a pig pen cipher here, this all comes down to shapes and dots. So we can see here, this letter A can be represented nice and simply by that. If we're looking at the letter J, however, we're going to do the same shape initially as the A, but we're going to put a little circle in there instead. If we're going to go for an S, we're going to go for that. If we're going to go for a W, we're going to, again, we're going to do the same shape, and we're going to put a little circle in there as well. So by using this cipher, we can use different shapes. So we're not using letters at all, different shapes to represent what different letters mean. What you can then do is take this to the next step by taking the Caesar cipher, using it in pig pen. So for example, I'm going to write the letter H, which is E, which is just going to be a square. And then I'm going to write the letter I, which is an F. So if anyone looks at this as a pig pen cipher here, all they're going to see are the letters EF. They don't actually mean to, I've actually written out hi using pig pen. So we can use this encryption to send secure messages to different places, to different areas, without people understanding or wanting to un understand what we've written. So we can take that to the next level by using something called protocols. These are a form of encryption which is used by uh, technology. And we've got two pr protocols here that you can see in front of you, HTTP and HTTPS. Now, I will quite happily give anyone um, a bonus point right now. So they've worked out that the S on HTTPS stands for secure. So when we're using HTTP, we can see quite clearly here that we are using the username, me, password, my password. And that is what the computer is sending back. So anyone can see that. If I were to look into your internet connection data and see what data is being transmitted to and from different servers, I'd be able to see what you're being, what's being sent using HTTP. With HTTPS, uh, as you can see here, this makes no sense to you. And this makes no sense to you. You look at that, you don't know what it says is username me, password my password. You don't know that, you don't understand that because you don't know what's being sent and transmitted. What this does is it uses something called a key. Um, there are two types of key, public key and private key. Now the public key is available to everybody. Um, it's held publicly so you can't lose it, it can't be just deleted or destroyed. So when you're accessing, uh, for example, online banking, 
you're using a public key because this is say for example i personally use halifax this is what halifax has said right this is our public key for using our online banking however there's also the private key and the private key remains confidential between the person using the computer and the server they're connecting to so that's what makes it really secure that private key you don't want anyone to find out your private key because then they'll be able to decrypt the messages you are sending at which point then they're no longer secure so we've got public keys available to everyone they're held publicly so you can't lose them um, then you've got the private key which remains confidential between the person and the server it's communicating with you don't want to share that because then people can intercept and see the data that's being used and of course because it's only shared between two people it can potentially be lost so up next we're going to look at using technology um, when i was in school um, i was one of the first people in my entire school to have a mobile phone this shows how old i am but as a result of that when i was at school thinking about using technology respectfully and responsibly it wasn't as important as it is today there are loads of different ways which you can use technology both for good and for bad um, but essentially what you guys need to be thinking about is how can we use it respectfully how can we use it responsibly we can split this up into two different uh, sections um, and we're going to think about wide organizations so for example Tesco's um, Halifax um, American Express we can think about this and categorize this into two different sections if we're just taking a focus on social media we can think about how can organizations use social media and how should organizations use social media so if we think about how can organizations use social media we can think about them running adverts competitions promoting their products interacting with their customers how should they use social media what rules should they have put in place it goes back to this whole idea of being respectful and responsible when using social media for example, in schools, some schools have Instagram accounts, Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts. They have rules that are in place that need to be followed to make sure the, the social media accounts are run in a certain way, to make sure people are being respectful, to make sure people are being responsible. If you're working for a large company, so let's just go with Tesco's for example, there are other supermarkets out there. If you're working, if you post something on Tesco's uh, as a complaint, you'd expect to see um, a nice message back from Tesco's, oh, I'm ever so sorry, get in touch, we can see if we can get it sorted out for you. You wouldn't expect Tesco's to reply on one of their public social media pages by saying, saying something offensive. So when we're using social media, when you're using any form of technology, to be honest, you need to make sure you're being respectful and responsible. So in this video today, we have looked at encryption, including public keys and private keys when we looked at protocols. Um, we've also looked at how we should use technology respectfully and responsibly as well. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I shall see you on another video. See you later.